Okay, today we're going to try and tell whether or not this series I've presented in front of you converges or diverges. Now, we have seen our geometric series and we've seen our divergence test, so let's see if we can apply what we've learned so far. Well, from what we're looking at, this does not look like a geometric series, so we can skip that. But hey, maybe we could do the divergence test, right? You know, so how about we do this? Let's say the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over, oh, I didn't write the infinity, of 1 over n squared. And we know what that means. If we plug in infinity for n squared, we have something super huge on the bottom. And that is going to be dividing our 1. And so we're going to get something super duper small that we may as well just call it 0. Now, remember, our divergence test passes only if the limit as n approaches infinity does not equal 0, right? In that case, if it does not equal 0, then we can say for sure that this series diverges. However, just because it does not not equal zero, or because in this case we get some, we get um, zero, um, we can't say we don't have enough information to tell if it diverges or converges. So we're going to need to do another test. Now, one thing we can do is the integral test. Now, what is the integral test? Okay, before we get into that, let's look at a couple. Um, let's look at a couple ends for our series, right? What if we plug in one for n? We'll get 1 over 1 squared, that's just 1, and then plus 1 over 2 squared, that's 1 fourth, plus 1 over 3 squared, that's 1 ninth, plus 1 over 4 squared, that's 1 sixteenth. Okay, so looks like we're staying positive, but we're just decreasing, decreasing over time, getting closer and closer to zero, but we're not entirely sure yet if this is going to converge or diverge. So what is this integral test I'm talking about? Well, Let's start with this one right here. We got a nice round one to start off with. So we can say that our sum here, let's write this. We could say that our sum from n equals 1 to infinity is going to be equal to 1 plus our sum from n equals 2 to infinity, right? That makes sense. If it doesn't just pause, take some time to think about it, it makes sense. Okay. So we have this, right? And now what is the integral that I'm talking about come into play? Well, what we can say is that our sum that we just wrote is going to be less than 1 plus the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. And if you're not entirely sure where I'm getting this from, I encourage you to pause and graph this function, and you'll see, right? If we graph the points that we're given for our, um, for our sum, uh, along the curve 1 over n squared, you'll see that we can't get the exact area underneath the curve. We're going to end up looking at something that looks like a right Riemann sum, and we know what right Riemann sums are. And since we know that 1 over, 1 over n squared is kind of a decreasing slope, our right Riemann sums are going to give us an underestimate, which is why doing this summation is less than taking the actual integral from 1 to infinity, right? So that's what we're going to do now. One, the integral of 1 over n squared from 1 to infinity is a uh, improper integral. So what do we do with these improper integrals? Well, it's actually quite easy what we're going to do. We're going to say 1 plus the limit as, and we're going to use a dummy variable. We'll use t as t approaches infinity um, da -da -da, of this integral 1 to t and it's going to be 1 over n squared. And now we can integrate this. Now, 1 over n squared is n to the negative 2. So we're doing our reverse power rule. So what we're going to do, we're going to raise the power by 1 and then divide by that new power. So n to the negative 2, raising it by 1 becomes n to the negative 1, and dividing by that becomes negative n to the negative 1. So here's what we'll get. We'll get 1 plus the limit as t approaches infinity of, what did I just say, of negative 1 over n. Okay, and yeah, just like that. Um, perfect. Okay, and then we need to evaluate this from t and 1, right? So t, again, t is going to be approaching infinity, and if we have negative 1 over n approaching infinity, that's going to, 1 over infinity is equal to 0. This is going to be equal to 0. And then minus, remember, we're doing our integrals. You see how these things build on top of each other? So our integral, we're going to plug in 1. So negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. So we're going to subtract negative 1. So that's just the same thing as adding 1, right? So this entire thing, right, this entire thing that we just resolved 
comes to 1. We found that this integral right here, right, this thing that we started off with, is equal to 1. So going back to our statement that we have here, we can see that our sum, our original series, uh, n equals 1 to infinity, is going to be less than 1 plus 1, right? Oh my gosh, I spoiled the answer. 1 plus 1, which is 2, right, is equal to 2. So if we can say that our, our sum, our series, right, is less than some finite number, right? We're saying it's clearly less than 2, and we can see from our series that it doesn't go negative. It seems to just stay positive and decreasing. The numbers just keep getting smaller and smaller, right? So if we say that it's less than this finite number, we can, we can say for sure that this series is going to converge. Now let's say we found out that our series was less than, I don't know, infinity, we're not really too sure if it converges or diverges, right? But since we found that it's less than a number, in this case, 2, we can say that this series is going to converge. And that's how we do our integral test. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you learned something.